Hello. Today's stories come from r slash Today I Messed Up. We have three funny Reddit stories today with an emphasis on the funny, as is always the case with Tifu. Story one is titled, Today I Effed Up by Going on a Date with a Therapist. This was actually last December, but I'm always told this is a hilarious story, so I thought I'd share. Last September, my ex-wife and I filed for divorce. We were separated. One of my best friends says I should try dating. She's never led me astray, so I say, fudge it. Why not? First girl I match with on Hinge seems nice. We talk for a few days since I'm on a business trip and plan to go out when I get back. She's a therapist, works with neurodivergent kids. We chat a bit. All's good. We go on our first date after work on a Tuesday. I pick her up at her place, go to my favorite pizza joint in her area. Starts a bit awkward, as first dates do. She then tells me, I, the girl, can't wait to tell you I'm pregnant. Okay, weird. Maybe the nerves. Understand we had no booze at this point. I think she's just nervous. Great. A few minutes later, she's telling me about her parents who live near the Wisconsin-Minnesota border, and we are in the Chicagoland area. These parents show up and sit down with us. Yet they lived in the Great White North? So I'm against the wall of the booth with her dad sitting next to me. She's across from me, her mom next to her. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. Guess I'm paying for their meal too. Double date. Great. Mom and dad tell me they've heard a lot about me, yada yada. How much could they know? They talk about what it's like working for a vocational school. So I start freaking out as I've only said I'm a school admin, nothing more, not where I work. I say it's great, but I'm looking to go back to the middle school or elementary next year. Dad says he can't wait to have a son-in-law like me. Mom says she can't wait to have me marry into the family. Awkward. They were drinking, so I give them a pass. Awkward evening continues. Yada yada, get to know you, usual junk. We start leaving, and I picked up this chick, so I've got to drop her off. Grandma raised a gentleman, you know? Figured I'd do that and dip. Nope. We get back. Parents park next to me. Double fudge. Invite me up. Mom said she baked a great pumpkin pie earlier today. Well, crap on a cracker. I love me some pumpkin pie. Decide fudge it. Might as well get something out of this night. Had some pie. Truthfully, some of the best pumpkin pie I've ever had. I try to leave and they weren't really letting me (laughs) by giving me more pie or starting a new conversation topic. Best friend, one who told me to start dating, calls, asks, what's up? Took the call in the bathroom and she comes up with this plan. I'm going to pick up my friend, Eddie, because she thought I shouldn't use a girl's name, with his flat tire. Great, I got a note. She says she needs to walk her dog, annoying puff of hair, yapping dog, rubbing his behind on everything and dragging his butt across the floor. Very poorly trained. Gord it. Fine. Come with and walk me down. Mom comes too. I'm standing there trying to leave as Chick takes her dog for a bio break. Mom says it's nice to meet me, yada yada, and says, I'm so glad daughter found you. I didn't think she'd be able to settle down since we've had her committed three times and walks away. W-T-F. Mom dropped. I'm panicking now, sweating a bit. I turn to get in my car and Chick is right there. Hugs me, tries to kiss me, yada yada, tells me, I love you and can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. So I reply, great, gotta go, you know, friend needs help. I get in the car, this chick is in my rear mirror and she's calling me. I pick up and she said, you didn't say you love me. Best friend calls, oops, hang on, important call, and picks up, tells my buddy this, she's laughing her butt off. I'm scared breathless at this point, thinking headlights in my rearview mirror are her. So I start speeding for the highway. I'm speeding away. Get pulled over. Cop asks why. I tell him everything. Takes a good five to six minutes to get him to understand. He noticed I have Wisconsin plates. All he says is, bro, and gives me great advice. Never mess with crazy. Thanks, bro chacho. Cop feels sorry for me and escorts me to the highway. Great. Freedom. Chick texts me. I try to ghost her. Now, 
I left out an important detail. I went on a school night wearing spirit wear with my school logo. Once you know the name, it's hard not to find as I'm the only type of school like this in my county. I go to my boss the next day and tell him. Says I'm a fracking idiot for wearing my work shirt. Laughs his butt off about the whole situation. Asks if I blocked her. Oh no. That's a good idea, so I do it. Tells me I'm a smooth brain again for not thinking this through. She figured out where I worked and starts calling my desk. Asking when we are going out. Leaves a message. Says she wants to be engaged by the time she's 30. Which was weeks away. Literally the next month since we went over birthdays. At this point, I'm freaking out. I have a school resource officer in my building. I tell him what happened. Gave her name. He told me he'd take care of it if she came by, but also told me to move my car to the back. Gated and can't see. Dude's a saint and it was a great idea. Chick shows up asking to see me. Security tells her I don't work here. She gets snotty with the school resource officer. Gets escorted out. Calls my desk phone pleading with me to give her a chance. Finds my sister, my best friend, all on Facebook. Tells them we are soulmates. I tell them to block her immediately. Chick was crazy. Got her to calm the F out when I told her I'm going to report her for harassment to her licensing board. All total nonsense. No idea if that would do anything. And that, kids, is the story of how I met your mother. Kidding, but dang was I scared of dating for a bit. That would definitely be enough to scare anyone out of the dating scene. Her parents were clearly out to lunch too and enabling her behavior. Speaking of her parents, I want to try a piece of that pumpkin pie. It's definitely a fave of mine. Let's check out the comments where people call out OP for not getting out of there sooner. Ot Curtis said, I'm honestly surprised this post isn't titled, Today I effed up by wanting pumpkin pie and getting murdered instead. Seriously, man, how many red flags does it take? Someone else added, OP likes to see just how red the flags can get. Knickerbockers added, OP playing capture the flag with red flags. Slim Cognito said, The speeding away because you became paranoid she was following you is probably my favorite part. There's something about imagining how panicked you must have been that is hilarious. Iron Road added, Cop, man, this is the third dude she has run off this week. Nivera added, Oh, Tiffany? Kinda surprised I didn't clock you going faster. Dormsta said, Hot take, coming from a therapist. Either one, psych draws psych and she fits the bill, or two, she's not actually a therapist and it's her cover for being so knowledgeable about serious mental illness. I'm leaning towards two. Story two is the first of two where I am again reminded how often things go wrong and how often those wrongs are a code brown, even for adults. I will note, these are far more PG than others and heavier on the situational comedy. If you've been put off in the past by this type of humor, story two is titled, Today I messed up by purchasing an expensive coffee machine and making a terrible discovery. I drink a lot of coffee. My mornings consist of two 300 milliliter mugs of coffee and I sometimes have a third after dinner later in the day. Recently, I got far too into James Hoffman's videos and decided to upgrade my junky drip coffee machine for a proper precision brewer. And when I say precision, I mean that this thing came with a water testing strip so you can calibrate the machine for the mineral content in your water supply. Serious nerd stuff. To justify the ludicrous amount of money I spent on what appears to be the Hadron Collider of coffee machines, I did some research on brewing ratios in order to maximize the allegedly life-changing potential of this equipment. Now, Coffee Science says the ideal water to beans ratio for this brew method is about 60 grams of grounds per liter of water. Out of interest, I decided to prepare my usual ratio from the old machine and see how close I was. It turns out, since I got the old machine just over a year ago, I've been brewing at about 20 grams per liter, resulting in what I now realize is pathetically weak brew. I prepared a proper 60 gram per liter brew with the new machine, and the resulting coffee was on another planet. The flavors were so developed. It was like I could taste the touch of the Colombian farmer who picked the beans. I drank my full morning dose of two 300 milliliter mugs in just over an hour. And then 
I discovered an unexpected side effect. The year of drinking weak as F brew has conditioned my body for weak coffee. And I had just drunk over half a liter of coffee that was theoretically three times as strong as usual. It has now been an hour since I finished that first pot and I can hear the passage of time. A fly flew past me in slow motion. I made an omelet for lunch and I beat the egg so fast it turned into steam. My heart no longer beats. It vibrates. And there is something unholy brewing in my lower intestine. And I am fearing the wrath of God when it is released. Send help. Edit. Here is the machine I bought for those who have asked although it appears to be sold out at the moment. Did I get the last one? And here is the James Hoffman review that convinced me to ruin my life in this particular way. Edit 2. To everyone accusing this of being some kind of viral ad, it's true. Sage paid me. In fact, specifically requested I include the details of me plastering the inside of my toilet bowl following the intestinal catastrophe their product gave me. Aggressive butt vomit is exactly the kind of PR exposure they want for their brand. The end. Oh, the end. I hope you found that as comical as I did. It was just too fun of a read not to share. Let's jump to the comments for some other funny tales of when coffee ratios were all out of whack. Bowser's mom said, this is a great tale. My favorite part is that you are such a coffee nerd you buy a machine with water quality test strips, but actually not a coffee nerd at all because you didn't even look into the ratios you were using for your drip coffee. <laughs> you also remind me of my in-laws. We wondered how and why they drank coffee all day long. Then we visited overnight, and I made myself coffee with my usual splash of milk, and my drink was mostly white. When I took a sip, it was the most disappointing coffee-flavored warm milk water. They can drink so much coffee because there's hardly any coffee to their coffee. OP replied, See? I knew of the world of brew ratios, but I didn't bother getting seriously into it until I upgraded my gear, as I presumed that no amount of precise measuring would get the best results on my weak drip machine. The weak butt brew I was accidentally making was fine, until now. Can't think of one said, One time, I was out of coffee at home and decided to brew a pot using instant coffee instead of regular grounds. Don't ever do that. Rachel 17 Fish said, I worked with a guy once who would drip brew a triple strong batch of coffee, pour himself a cup, then proceed to scoop instant coffee crystals into the triple brew. I'm not sure how he was alive. Can't think of one replied, that's terrifying. Tom Udo said, tell us about your ascent to the throne. OP replied, nearly turned myself inside out on the can and had to wipe for four minutes straight. Overall, I'd recommend the experience. This one for Rance said, you have experienced Epuphoria. Story three brings us a tale of hilarious bravado, karmic justice, and a side of food tampering. It is titled, Today I messed up by telling a waitress I had already beaten their hot wing challenge. Obligatory, this didn't happen today, but was actually a few years ago. But I'm sure you people of Reddit will still be able to enjoy my pain. So, as the title suggests, I like spicy things. I have a large collection of hot sauce at home. I have tried most of the world's super hot peppers and I've won numerous hot wing challenges. Usually, I'm fine. But as I've aged, I find that my stomach occasionally suffers. Nothing too extreme, but a lot of noise and sometimes a bit of ring of fire. Cut to the day of this specific incident. I live in a medium-sized city in Canada. My brother-in-law used to live in another city about 140 kilometers or 90 miles away. So for context, and this becomes important, about an hour and a half by car. This day in particular, we went to visit so we could drive him back to our house for the weekend. Now, we did this pretty often. Usually when we do, we find a restaurant to grab a bite to eat before we head home. The last few times we went, we found a small pub that specialized in buffalo wings. At the back of the menu, they advertised a hot wing challenge where if you finish their hottest wings, you eat free. Without an ounce of hesitation, I ordered the challenge wings. The waitress asked, are you sure? To which I replied, I like hot foods and I can't turn down an opportunity to eat free wings. She laughed and got my wings. They were hot, but I had definitely eaten hotter. And so I got my free wings. 
paid for my girlfriend's meal and my beer and went on my way. In the coming months, I did this twice more. Each time, the waitress would ask, are you sure? Each time, I would say yes. Each time, I got free wings. It was wonderful. Cut to this last time. We go to our favorite wing place. We waltz in with an air of familiarity and seat ourselves. The waitress, whom I later find out is the owner, comes to take our order. My girlfriend, daughters, and brother-in-law all order. Then she turns to me and asks what I'll be having. I say, I'd like to do the hot wing challenge, please. The waitress once again asks, are you sure? This is where I messed up. I stupidly told her, oh yeah, I've done this lots." Dear reader, when you tell the owner of an establishment that you've already eaten a free meal at their place, and now you're just there to fleece them out of another order of wings, they do not take it well. Our previously friendly waitress turns to me and coldly says, oh, have you? Then this should be easy for you. It was not. My wings came and everyone's eyes went wide and they leaned away from my meal. Instantly, everyone's eyes water and the waitress, owner, grins a big, toothy, mirthless grin. She says, enjoy, and walked away. I cannot convey to you in mere words the pain I suffered eating these wings. I took my first bite and it was searing doom. An explosion of nuclear fire blanketed my palate, not unlike what I'm sure the people at Pompeii would have experienced during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. My body began shivering and sweating. A river of snot and tears ran from my face. Twice I went to the washroom to cry to myself and question my life choices. Though no one expected me to finish, I endured. When it was finally over, everyone was silent. We paid without a word and left. In the car, my girlfriend turned to me and tentatively asked, are you okay? When I just nodded in the affirmative, she asked, are you sure? I just looked at her expressionless. We began our drive home. Again, I would like to reiterate that generally I don't experience much in the way of after effects from spicy foods. This was different though. I could feel the burn in my esophagus still, right down to my stomach, and my stomach was getting worse. I was getting bloated and uncomfortable. About a half hour into this hour and a half drive, it's becoming increasingly uncomfortable to the point where I'm shifting uncomfortably in the driver's seat. My girlfriend again asks if I'm okay. I tell her, something is off. She suggested stopping to use the bathroom, which I declined. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, and I felt like it had best be at home when it did, instead of some filthy gas station restroom. An hour into the drive and this discomfort is full-on pain. Bad pain. I step on the gas, blowing well past the speed limit. I didn't care, I just needed to get home. My stomach had decided that it was no longer going to house these abominations and one way or the other, they were coming out. When we finally got there, I put the car in park and ran to the front door. I fumbled with my keys while everyone else got out of the car. The door finally opened and I vaulted up the stairs four at a time while simultaneously undoing my pants. It was a race to the toilet and I was losing. Just as I got to the bathroom, it happened. I got the door mostly closed before a violent spray erupted from behind, (laughs) painting the back of the door and the floor. To minimize the splash zone, I made an executive decision. The bathtub instead of the toilet. I launched myself into the tub and started doing my best to get my clothes off. All the while, I'm violently vomiting from both ends all over myself. My girlfriend, God love her, came upstairs and, with a look of absolute disgust at my vile bodily expulsions, took my dirty clothes away and cleaned the door, walls, and floor. She came back upstairs after starting the laundry and turned the shower on to my battered, burning body. I was cowering in the fetal position as the warm water hit me. Still amazed at the backlash, a pound of spicy buffalo wings was able to put forth. She asked me in a sweet voice if I had learned my lesson. I feebly replied, yes, I lied. A and post edit. The place was called Tammy's Queen of Wings in North Bay, and it was 100% my own fault. My ego got the best of me. 
They do make you sign a small waiver, and it's just the wings and any non-alcoholic beverages the wing eater orders that come free. Everyone else's food has to be paid for. Second addendum, whoa, this got a lot of traction. A few more answers for those who are curious. The restaurant in question is closed permanently, which sucks because spicy or not, the wings were pretty good. I didn't suffer any long-term ill effects, and I don't have an ulcer. Thank God. We're in no rush to get married, but still kind of like each other's faces. And lastly, this was not the last time it happened. The last time the wings happened or the last time an eruption happened? Either way, the girlfriend is obviously the hero in this story. Let's head to the comments where some users track down a bit of an update on this restaurant owner. Hello talking to no one shared. As someone who waitressed at a restaurant that makes wings like this, don't let on that you can handle the heat. The sauce is just a basic buffalo sauce with however many drops of pure capsaicin extract. They can always add more drops if they think they will lose a challenge. Failsafe said, Looks like business closed in 2016 and she went into demolition contracting. For their Facebook page. Someone else added, So from demolishing stomachs and buttholes to buildings? She must have really perfected that hot sauce if she's taking buildings down now. Pup Pup Pass said, I hate it when restaurants do this to people. Using capsaicin extract recklessly like that can really hurt someone. Adam Rickman from Man vs. Food has a scary story about it. He went to do a spicy wing challenge just like you, and the chefs decided they wanted to go crazy for the TV show, and they dumped some weapons-grade extract into the sauce because they thought it would be funny. It really messed him up. He ate like two wings and then started to panic. There were points where he felt like his throat was closing up. And this is a guy who can handle insanely spicy food. There's a difference between a tough spicy food challenge and just poisoning someone with spice. The latter is never okay. Brian 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 added, Yeah, reading this, I was like, isn't this assault? If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.